Okay, happy Thursday morning to you all. Headed out for a work commute on the CB500X. Haven't had this thing out in uh, commute duty in a little while, and uh, now that I'm down two cars, this is the uh, this is the steed. It's going to get some miles put on it in the next few weeks. I'll tell you that. Uh, I've got to go down to Rosenberg today and work on a, another job. I guess I should put that in the GPS here. Uh, got to work on a client site that has a couple of machines that have somehow just randomly lost their uh, Windows domain memberships. I don't know if we've got a domain controller that's freaking out or what, but we called and said uh, they've got two or three people that can't log into computers saying the trust relationship with the domain has been lost. Yeah, that's never good. It's easy to fix, but you got to be there on site to do it because you can't get them logged into the computer. So anyway, uh, I'm going to stop right here in the shade over here in the shade and uh, plug in my address I know where I'm going but we'll see if Waze can give me uh, better routing I will rejoin you in just a moment okay I think I got it sorted out let's see what uh, Waze has in store for me I'm going to be taking mostly surface streets take uh, West Park Toll and go all the way down there and West Park Toll to Beltway 8 and all that but it's just toll roads and uh, it only saves me like five minutes thanks let's take the surface streets so on with the uh, truck repair saga and Christian Brothers uh, I have not called them back yet today uh, I have a couple three voicemails from them from the uh, owner of the store, apparently, and also from the uh, the manager of that store. Oh, got a, somebody stuck here. Need to put some cones out there, buddy. Sitting in the shade with a dark trailer. So, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's been responding to comments, so thanks for all the replies and the comments on yesterday's video. Uh, of whether I should give these guys another chance or not. Uh, I don't know. I'll know when I talk to them uh, to kind of figure out whether I want to do anything with them or not. Uh, I just don't trust them. I mean, they're slimy. That, that was just obvious malfeasance on their part. Jacking up the prices on those parts four to ten times the cost, you know. I mean, come on, really. I mean, this is a, a retail world. We all understand that, and you know, everybody wants wholesale prices and as cheap as they can get. But I mean, Jesus, even in retail, standard markup is thirty percent. We're talking three hundred to what seven hundred percent markup on a lot of those parts. It's just insane. The manifold, uh, worst it gets is like two hundred and sixty-eight bucks on Rock Auto and a whole bunch of other, you know, wholesale outlets, and. Uh, they were wanting to charge nine hundred dollars, almost a thousand dollars, just for the manifold. Come on, really? And even if if that's what needs to be replaced, you know, if the manifold's got a a crack in it in that pipe, you know, that's back at the the back edge toward the firewall, whatever, you know, uh, that's just nonsense. Anyway, so I don't know if I'll take it back to him or not. Uh, yeah, I've, I've read the uh, transcript of the voicemail and played it back and it, it sounds like they might not even be offering to fix all the stuff on the truck for free they just want to do the work that they charged me for for free so they want to do the coolant flush and the oil change well what the hell good does that do me if the thing is just pissing uh, antifreeze everywhere because of a broken coolant pipe it doesn't make any sense I mean, th that was my whole posture is why would you have done a coolant flush on a broken system before you even pressure tested it you know, <laughs> give me a break it doesn't work that way if you're going to be replacing all those parts you don't do it you put the fresh parts in there and then if you want to flush the block or whatever's left behind after a radiator and manifold and hoses and everything else okay fine you, know, you can flush the sediment out of it but yeah you know, doing doing a flush on a an already broken system that's not holding pressure it doesn't make any sense at all I guess the only potential logic in that scenario would be you're flushing out any other crap that's been in there that might be holding up other leaks like a stop leak and stuff like that so I don't know but that's just going to reveal more problems. It's not going to fix the problem. So in any case, uh, you're looking at uh, 
losing that coolant that you've just put into the system after the coolant flush and all that because they said they put fresh coolant in it. Really? Well, you know, if you're going to be opening it up again and just moving stuff out of it to replace parts, then you're uh, you're losing that coolant or you're just going to get it all nasty. So it doesn't make sense. The whole thing was uh, illogical and fraud. So, yeah. I'll quit beating the dead horse. We all know where that story goes. It's hot. It's hot already. We're headed for 100 degrees. The official temp is supposed to be, you know, 99 or 100 today, but yeah, the official temps are always off by several degrees. You know, those are taken at uh, the airport or the capital or, you know, the some official place, whatever. But uh, real temperatures are usually up or down that several degrees. And just on my patio, you know, I've got digital thermometers, analog thermometers, and they're always reading about anywhere from four to six degrees higher than what the official temperature says. It is hot. And the humidity is just gumbo thick out here, man. Squeeze your fists and get water. That's all right, I'm used to it somewhat. This year it's hitting me harder than it has previous years. I don't know why, you know, I'm getting older, I guess, but the, uh, the weather this year has been much hotter than I recall for uh, several years. It's just oppressive. Apparently our area here, Texas, whatever, uh, big high pressure dome, a heat dome is set up over the state and we've been getting record temps all over the place. Uh, I'm watching this guy because they're weaving all over the damn road. Um, record temperatures. In fact, I think Texas had the highest average temperature uh, of anywhere. Uh, even in, uh, the only place that was hotter was somewhere in Saudi Arabia or something like that. I don't know what the what the actual figure was. <laughs> oh my God, it's so hot out here. Ah! I got sweat running down my nose tickling the end of my nose, running into my eyes. Oh my God, it's hot. Oh, it's hot. Have I mentioned that it's hot yet? I need to wash out this helmet again. I guess I need to do one of those videos sometime. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of good videos out there on the internet uh, where people discuss how they maintain their riding gear, you know, washing gloves, helmets, uh, jackets, all that kind of stuff. I've got a routine that works pretty well for me. Uh, you know, the hot summer months like this, I generally uh, wash my helmet every two weeks, something like that. Depends on how much I'm actually sweating in it. But, uh, you know, washing the gloves and the jackets, it's not always as straightforward. It depends on their construction. Uh, a lot of uh, riding gear has uh, DWR and water repellent coatings and stuff on it, uh, particularly like Gore-Tex. You should not wash Gore-Tex in detergents. So you can use mild soaps or specialty soaps that are designed for that so it doesn't affect the uh, waterproofness of it. Uh, so anyway, uh, maybe I'll make one of those videos. I actually need to get some more tech wash. Uh, there's a product that I use that is good for the Gore-Tex and the fancier materials, but most of the gloves and stuff like that, I just, I wash them in uh, very gentle detergent uh, and uh, mix a baking soda, hot baking soda water, you know, try to neutralize odors and stuff like that. Works out pretty well. I mean, there's nothing worse than riding around in a set of gloves and helmet that smell like dirty tennis shoes. Blech. Every time you close the visor, pooey! or take your gloves off and then touch your face later and you're like, ah, oh, what smell? Oh, that's it. It's my hands. My hands smell like a dirty foot. Oh my God, sweat is just pouring down my face, like running down my cheeks, like I'm crying. I'm crying, it's so hot, Jesus. <laughs> Kill me. It's like Jeff Goldblum in The Fly. Kill me. Man, I gotta leave this helmet open. It is just too friggin' hot in here. I feel like I'm being waterboarded. Ooh, looks like we got a doozy here. Alright, no rubbernecking, people. Come on. You don't want to be involved in the damn thing. It's a multi-car stack up. One, two... 
two, it looks like just two. Oh goody, a train. Oh well, at least he's moving pretty fast. I should clear those tracks in just a moment. In the meanwhile, I'm going to uh, uh, step off and relax. Okay. Well, that was quick. Barely had time to step off. <laughs> Good timing, I guess. I was going to change the battery in the camera, but uh, not time now. Not time. Man, it's hot. Road closed. Oh no, man. Road closed. Goings, are we going? I don't know why they're going to stop Hey, there's a hole. Wow, just dumps us right into the highway. All right, sure hope we got a merge lane. parking <laughs> all right i made it it's really hot i'm gonna go inside see if i can fix their problems and uh i will catch you all for the uh, ride to the next destination whether that's uh, home or another job whatever it is it's gonna be sweating okay emergency sorted back on the road i've got a tentative appointment kind of over in my neighborhood which is nice you don't have to go all the way to the other side of town which was uh, the other potential that <laughs> I had one on the kind of the east side of downtown. I really don't want to go over there. It's a, a long haul from here, 65 something miles. So anyway, uh, I think I'm just going to head back toward my neighborhood. And uh, if this other one shapes up, uh, then I just uh, go a couple miles away from the house. That'll work. And it is steamy. 96 degrees, 97 degrees here already. And... Uh, only good thing about this is I've got the wind behind me going back the way I need to go. Well, mostly behind me. Got to kind of go that way, but it's uh, going almost due north right now. And this helmet stinks. I'm going to wash it tonight. Uh, you missed your turn, dude. <laughs> you can go in that if you really want to. Wouldn't advise it, but, you know, it's your call there, fella. I don't think that minivan has uh, got the go-go gadget wheels on it. So my uh, scooter crash video from the Cannonball Run where I crashed on gravel, did a face plant, that video was uh, featured on Moto Madness uh, today on their latest video. I'll link it here. Uh, that was pretty cool. They sent me a request a few days ago asking if it was okay to use the footage and they would you know, give me full credit for it and all that and I uh, said yeah sure man let me know if you want raw footage or whatever just email me and I'll I'll give you the download links but they put it in their video today and uh, sent me a link early this morning saying hey we featured it in this go check it out so go check it out on Moto Madness that's awesome they've got like five and a half million subscribers or something that's a huge channel Did you see the sign back there? $16 to take this toll? My God, that's insane. Thanks, I'll pass. It's only like a, what, 10 or 12 mile stretch here, and they want $16? I don't think so. Maybe those were maximums that could be charged, but still. How do you know what you're going to get charged? Crazy. A dollar six or a dollar something minimum toll at each one of those stations. And they're like, uh, 
a dozen of them as you go along here. And unfortunately, motorcycles can't take those for free because they're not HOV, they're toll. We can take HOVs for free in Texas, anywhere in Texas, but not, uh, not toll lanes for free. Here's another one. Look at these prices. What? $15? What kind of crack are you smoking? That's a heck of a racket for the state, you know. Yeah, let's, let's tear up a highway and leave it torn up forever. But what we'll do is we'll open up toll lanes to coerce people into taking the tolls while we leave the rest of it torn to shit forever. I mean, this is a 10-year project. So we'll, uh, we'll just fleece the public for a whole bunch of money and not finish the road construction. I think I'm going to go ahead and fill up while I'm uh, out. Might as well. <sighs> Put some fresh go-go juice in this thing because it's a little stale. Because uh, the stuff that's in here is, you know, probably going on six months old now. So give myself a better chance of not uh, ending up stranded somewhere. <laughs> Ooh, man, fuel has gone up. I need to go check what it is over uh, around the corner from me, but I'm going to go ahead and get raped for uh, 424 a gallon here. Whoa, that's full. Hey, look at that. One more penny. From 25. All right. Fresh go-go juice. Man, I'm going to go over to Walmart and see how much it is over there, just for comparison's sake. For super. 421.9. Wowza, the uh, fuel here is so much cheaper. Camera was so hot it shut itself down, but I wanted to show you the price in, uh, between the two stations. It is insane difference. So we're looking at uh, 297, 322, and 347 for premium. So we're talking, what, almost 80 cents difference over at that other uh, station? That's crazy, man. Crazy. They used to be pretty uh, competitive or, you know, wouldn't say uh, equal or aggressive on their pricing, but they were competitive within a few cents of uh, Walmart and everywhere else. But man, talking 80 cents difference for fuel, that is insanity. If you live in this area, skip that Shell station over there. They're ripping you off. Mm, I'm just brain dead. I'm so hot. I can't even think. normal uh, flow of consciousness has been interrupted. I think I'm going to go back out to the liquor store and get a big old bottle of that pre-mixed uh, Cha-Cha's Long, eh, Long Island iced tea. Sounds good. Just put a straw in it. <laughs> no, I got to add ice to it somehow. All right. I'll catch you all in a little bit, maybe, if not, tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in, tagging along, and uh, wish me luck for my sweaty adventures.